This episode is sponsored by SnapFluent Secrets. Are you ready to take your social media presence to the next level? Join SnapFluent Secrets, the ultimate course designed to help you master the art of content creation. Discover how to craft captivating posts tailored for Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, all while showcasing your unique photography style. Learn strategies that grow your audience organically, engage your followers, and build a brand that stands out in a crowded market. Don't miss this opportunity to unlock your creative freedom and turn your passion into a thriving moneymaker for your business. Start learning today with a free one-hour online training video at snapfluencesecrets.com. That's snapfluencesecrets.com. We are back. Another episode of the Banger Squadcast, and you're actually now getting to see this not only hear it, but you can see it as well as now the videos are on my YouTube channel. However, I'm still focusing on the audio. I'm still focusing on the podcast. So I want to talk to you guys today about something that I don't really talk about too much uh, other than kind of telling my story. But what I want to talk about is the side hustle to the professional and how I did it, how I went from being a musician into a full-time photographer and building a successful business. I feel like this is a really important story that needs to get out there. It needs to be told. You guys need to understand where I came from. So without going too deep into my full story of my life, um, I had a very troubled teenage years. It was a very rough time for me growing up in Green Bay by myself. um, uh, Situations in the family did not allow me to be around a lot of my family. So I was fending on my own. And because of that, uh, if you know anything about the real world, uh, being on your own without parents around and doing it all on your own, you get into some stupid shit. And that's what happened with me is I was not where I was supposed to be in life. I was not doing what I should have been doing in life. And it caught up to me. I got into trouble. Uh, And at that time, I realized that that wasn't the life that I wanted. Uh, I didn't know what the life I wanted was, but I knew that I didn't want to end up going back to jail a bunch and ending up in and out of jail and in and out of trouble. And I knew that that was not what I wanted. So at that point, I decided that I wanted to make a change. And I moved out of Green Bay, moved about 35 minutes south to a town called Appleton, uh, which is uh, um, the bigger city of the suburb that I live in now. Uh, And I decided that I wanted to get out there and start meeting people and and trying to get something right with my life. I was a uh, an eighteen year old kid, uh, and I was trying to figure out where I wanted to be. Well, what happened is I met some people. I met some some friends um, who were musicians. They were hip hop artists. They were recording stuff in a garage that wasn't like a finished garage. It was like an old shed out back, basically. And I realized that this was kind of where I wanted to be, what I wanted to do. It was really fun. It was entertaining. It was fun to watch. It was fun to watch them recording on this little like four track recorder. And I decided that I wanted to do this. I wanted to to do music. So I started writing very, very terrible lyrics and putting out very, very terrible songs until it started growing and growing and growing and growing. And soon I realized that what I was doing is I was building this business around my music, my music career. And the cool thing about it was, is at that time I didn't have any money. I didn't have any way to um, really fund anything or, or do anything. So I wanted to create everything myself, or I should say I had to create everything myself. I had to uh, learn how to take photos. I had a very good friend who was like a brother to me, one of my best friends, Sean. Um, He was into photography. He was teaching me a little bit of photography. We would go out and we would just do like little photo walks where we just walk around and take photos. He was taking my photos. I was in turn taking photos of other people. Um, And I wanted to learn my, my own everything. I wanted to know how to do it. I wanted my hand in everything. My, my hip hop name was hands on. Uh, I wanted my hands on everything. And that's not a, a, a how the name actually came. It was originally because I, back in my teenage years, I loved DJing and, and being in that DJ industry and my hands were on turntables. So that's where hands on originally came from. But, um, I wanted to have my, my hand on everything that came out because I wanted to make sure that, it was the right thing for me. 
because I didn't want anything to happen that could send me back into that place that I was at prior to that. So I learned my own photography. I, I learned how to do videography. Now, was it good? No. Um, but I learned it. I, I taught myself it. Uh, I learned how to do screen printing. I learned how to make vinyl stickers. I learned how to do embroidery. I taught myself graphic design. It. I started at 14 years old um, building what fan sites for different bands. Uh, but when I turned 18, 19, it was like, okay, I'm going to take this graphic design knowledge I know and make my own album covers. I'm going to make my own posters. I'm going to make my own flyers. I'm going to do all of this stuff myself. Uh, and when you're making posters and flyers and album covers, you need photos. And if you can't hire to or afford to hire somebody, you got to do it yourself. So that's how I got into it, is I got into taking terrible photos that I could use on my terribly graphic designed f album covers, and it transpired from there. But what happened is somewhere along that music career, I, I, I landed in this lane of, of country hip hop. And it once I got into that lane, now I grew up on the streets of Green Bay uh, doing really bad shit, but I am originally from a very, very small town of, I would say, 400 people in West Virginia. So I know the country. I grew up in the country until I was 13, and then I moved to Wisconsin where I was thrusted into um, inner city Green Bay life. So I know both. I know the, the, the rap side, but I also know the country side. So to be able to do this country rap that was just beginning to get a little popular, there were three or four artists, uh, it thrust me into this, into this uh, genre where it was starting to take off. So at this point, I, I need to really start learning how to do all of this stuff. And, and it actually, it, it, it transpired into me having one of the biggest merch table booths at any local independent hip hop show I've ever seen. I mean, at one point we had 10 to 15 different t-shirt designs, five different CDs, hats, beanies, stickers, koozies. Uh, we had literally everything that had hands on on it. Uh, I started getting pretty popular uh, in this scene with uh, a, a company called Custom Offsets. I do want to talk about them a little bit in this because it is part of the side hustle to the full time. So what happened is right around 2015 or 2016, my name was getting pretty big. Uh, in the in the industry. So I approached this company that my friend Jordan told me about. I actually met Jordan at a show. I was I jumped on stage with my friend's cover band and did one song. And when I was done, he comes up to me. He's like, you have to check out this, this custom offsets. I think your music would align with what they do. So I checked them out and I found out what they were about. A very small truck company uh, doing pretty good numbers in the industry. But... I reached out and I was like, hey, I want to make a theme song for your business. And they said, sure. And the owner, Sean, super cool dude, you know, uh, he he was like, yeah, make this song for us. So I went and I sat down in my apartment and, and I sat down and I made this song in one night. One night I, I sat down and I made the song Flexed. And the song Flexed is still to date my f most popular song. Over 3 million plays on Spotify, uh, almost a half million views on YouTube. And it's been used in so many different custom offsets, webisodes and YouTube videos. And, and all their following just blew this song up. So thanks to custom offsets for that. Um, but what happened is... Because I was doing all this stuff, I was making my own shirts, making my own album covers, all of this. At that time, Sean and Custom Offsets in general were looking for a graphic designer and photographer to start um, blowing up their YouTube. Their YouTube at that time had like 900 subscribers on it. Uh, and they, it was dormant. They had one video that was kind of viral, uh, but it wasn't doing anything. So I, I applied. I was like, and it wasn't even really an application. It was like, hey, this is hands-on. I see you're looking for a graphic designer and a YouTube uh, person. Uh, what do I have to do? And they were, and Sean was like, we'll see you next week for orientation. You can start. And the company was only uh, six people deep at that time, six employees. Uh, currently, they're at like hundreds of employees because this company just took off too. Um, but But this is what happened is my music, with my side hustle of photography had instantly 
turned into now I am going into photography. I'm going into the industry and I'm, I'm learning more about it, more about YouTube, more about the the analytics and the algorithms and, and all of these words that prior to in my hip hop career, I had no idea about. So what I did was I, I took this information and and anything that I was learning from custom offsets through custom offsets, I was trying to figure out how I could apply it to my side hustle, which was my photography business. At this time, I was only doing like one to two weddings a year and they were family friends. Uh, I was actually terrified to shoot weddings when I first got into photography or when I first really say that I got into photography around 2013. I was a wedding DJ and uh, somebody asked me to shoot photography on top of DJing and I was terrified. I said no, uh, but then a family friend actually asked me, I don't know, a month or so later to shoot for him, my friend Kyle. And I was like, you know what? Let's give it a try. It's a park wedding. They didn't expect a lot. Uh, I didn't really know what I was doing. And I did it. Now, in retrospect, I highly suggest anybody that's watching or listening to this to definitely be a second shooter for a while, at least a full season of weddings. Be a second shooter to somebody who knows what they're doing. Otherwise, you're going to take the long route like I did. But if you can, if you can sh second shoot with someone, and you'll you'll kind of kickstart your career that much faster. But I digress. Let's get back to it. Um, so I was learning this stuff from custom offsets or through custom offsets, and I decided that I wanted to really pursue my side hustle and see how big I could get it. So at this time, I was still touring nationally, signed to a record label out of Atlanta, Georgia or just outside of Atlanta, I was signed to them. I was touring. I was doing, you know, 20 shows at a time all throughout the United States, playing in Vegas and playing in Nashville and playing in all these different cities, West Virginia, Columbus, Ohio was like one of my biggest uh, markets. And those people there, the fans absolutely love me. But I was doing music, touring. I was full-time at Custom Offsets and I was building this side hustle of photography. So it, it really became this thing where I was getting overwhelmed. I had a lot going on. I had music going on. And I came up for my one-year review at Custom Offsets. At this point, they had went from like 9,000 subscribers to like 90,000 subscribers within a 12-year or 12-month period. So they were really, really growing really quickly. And uh, we had hired on more people and we hired on a, just a uh, marketing person and we were just hiring all left and right, moved to a bigger facility. And then they ended up moving to another bigger, bigger facility. But um, we moved to a bigger facility and I came up for my year review. And at this time, now I was shooting like 10 to 15 weddings a year and I was shooting or I was touring and I was working full time and I sat down with Sean and he came to the question. He's like, I'm willing to give you a raise. I'm willing to give you really good money for what you're doing because we see that it's working. Um, but you're basically going to have to give up photography, your side hustle. You're going to have to give up the music because I'll need you accessible 24 seven. And it was at that point I was sitting there and like without really even hesitation, I I told him that I couldn't do it. I was like, I, I can't do that. I can't give up. One, I have contracts for weddings. Two, I have put so much time into this music thing and there's so much passion into this music. I can't just give it up. I can't stop touring. Um, ironically, shortly after that, I stopped touring. But uh, I, at that time, I said that I couldn't do it. And without even hesitation, Sean's like, okay. How about I just give you some insight on how to start your own business? Uh, Sean, uh, without going off into too deep of a tangent, Sean was always the person that uh, wanted to see, he wants to see everybody succeed in their own lane. He doesn't feel like anybody ever should have a boss. Uh, you should make your own career, your own success, your own path. And that is a big inspiration to the reason that I do what I do as far as education and trying to teach everybody how to be the best they can, because I feel the same way. Yeah, you, you don't need to have 
a boss. You don't need to work for somebody who's going to replace you the day you leave. And I've always felt that way, even prior to any of this. Uh, I know I've had multiple bosses who I absolutely loved. Some of them are some of my best friends now. But at the time or overall, I don't feel you need a boss. You, you can make your own success if you're motivated enough. So Sean's like, let me just teach you how to do, uh, uh, how to run a business. Uh, I'm not going to give you any money. I'm not going to give you any, you know, anything like that, any physical help. Uh, but I'll give you insight, any questions you may have, any direction you need, any promotion you need. We can, uh, I can help with custom offsets. And it was the scariest feeling in the world to go home and tell Casey that I had left a job that was paying me really good money compared to what I had made in the past uh, because I wanted to pursue a music career and pursue my own photography career. Now, she has always been supportive, very, very supportive of, supportive of me, helped me in more ways than I can ever say. But to tell her that was like the most terrifying thing. Now, with that being said... Custom Offsets had planned a trip to the Dominican Republic for a work, basically a work vacation, work trip. Um, so I got to go home and say, hey, honey, I quit my job, but they're taking us to the Dominican anyway. So it was kind of like a, a catch-22. Like it was like, here's some bad news, but I'm going to sugarcoat it with some really awesome news. Uh, so it, it worked. But... Uh, now I'm on my own. Now I have to make this photography thing work. And not knowing much of anything about business other than hustling and, and knowing the, the street business, I didn't really know what I was doing. So I, I adapted and, and used this street hustling stuff that I knew from back in my teenage years and applied it to photography, applied it to my photography business. And, and I looked at it and it might not be the right way, but it's the way that I made it to where I am. And, and, and even further uh, that I, that I plan on going is what can I do now to support myself tomorrow? And then just con con continue repeating that. What can I do today to make more tomorrow? And that's actually my motto. It's my mantra. Everybody in my life hates it, uh, but it's I'll make more tomorrow. I don't worry about money. I don't worry about situations like that. I don't worry about possessions because I'll just make more tomorrow. If I spend money today making memories, if I spend money today on equipment, I'll make more tomorrow. It's fine. I can't take it all with me. And if I die tonight, I want to make sure that I was happy. So I took all this information that I knew from the streets and tried to apply it to photography. And I don't know how or why, but it absolutely worked because here I am, uh, you're watching me or listening to me. And I, I'm thankful for that because I went from a very troubled teen who was sleeping on couches uh, of friends' houses and random parties to running this successful photography business all through the story that I just told you. And I could go and I could talk about this way deeper and way longer, but I don't want to keep you guys too long. But I guess what I'm saying is, and, and what I want you to take from this, this whole story is the fact that you can apply information and knowledge that you have from one thing and adapt it to the next until you find out where you want to be. Now, growing up back in the early days and in my early 20s, I was job hopping and, and trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And if you ask me what I wanted to do at 18 years old, right after I got out of trouble, I had no idea. I didn't know if there was a career path for me. Uh, I And even making music, like I was like, I'm a hip hop artist. I'm a rapper. I'm a touring musician. I go on stage and make people have fun or, or allow people to have fun. I knew that that would never be the forever goal. I knew that there was something else. And I actually told myself, um, when I was about 30 years old, I would say maybe 31, if I don't have my shit together by 35, um, I, I'm quitting music all over, all around. Um, and I, I planned on quitting music by 35 anyway. 
Um, I don't remember when I ended up quitting. I think I was 34, uh, if that would go back, and I would have to figure out those numbers. But uh, I was like, I'm done by 35. If I'm not super successful and on um, whatever video platform would be popular at the time, it wouldn't be like MTV. But what I'm saying is if I'm not known, if I'm not signing autographs everywhere I go, if I'm not that famous celebrity on TV and at the awards and stuff, I'm giving it up. And I didn't give it up for that reason. I gave it up because I was more dedicated to photography because I realized that once I got into photography, it wasn't just a hobby to me. It wasn't just a way to to support my music career. I really started to enjoy photography and learning how to shoot this high contrast, moody, off-camera flash type stuff. Now, I wasn't doing off-camera flash at the time, but I always followed people like Joel Grimes and Glenn Dewis and these people who were doing it and, and trying to figure out how they did it. And and it was just so entertaining and, and self-satisfying for me to do photography that I didn't care about anything else. I didn't care about music. I didn't care about partying all the time. So I, I went and, and, and I found this passion and this thing that I loved and I went balls to the wall with it. Everything that I've ever done has been 100% learn everything, do as much as I can. Uh, it's a blessing and a curse to be honest. But with photography, it's like, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do the rest of my life until I retire and I'm laying on a beach. Now, side story, I've laid on more beaches since I've been a photographer than I ever have prior to that, but that's just because that's where my photography has taken me and because I wanted it to take me there. So I guess just keep going and you're, it might be a side hustle today, but if you adapt and learn and grow, all of a sudden you're going to be getting these bookings and then you're going to realize that you are way more satisfied doing photography, doing these these photography projects than you ever are at a nine to five. And it, yes, it is one of the scariest things to walk away from a job that you know you're getting paid hourly and you'll get a paycheck every other week or once a week or whatever it is to not knowing if you're ever going to get paid again. But I promise you, if you put time and, and dedication into it, you will 100% get booked become successful and make something of your photography business. I have no doubt in my mind. Just stay motivated. Stay motivated to make sure that you are successful. Nobody else is going to do it for you. You might have supporters, but nobody else can control your business quite like you can. That's all I got to say today. Thank you so much. Hope this, uh, you found this entertaining and informative. Now you know a little bit about my past, but if you want to take this a little further, uh, make sure you go and check out Snap Fluent Secrets. It is my online course about content creation as a photographer. Right now, I have a one-hour training video online completely free. You can check that out at snapfluencesecrets.com. And we will see you in the next podcast. I'll talk to you later.